Now we're gonna shift the topic to the dream chairs. Oh, so, nice. yeah, the dream chairs project that you have started in last year in the summer, and I remember mm-hmm. we spent more than an hour talking about this, and it was a really nice breezing day. I remember I was sitting in my backyard and talking to you on the phone, and we just you sharing with me this idea that you had only one chair at that time. <laughs> but the idea was so amazing and I can see it coming to life and you at you as well and you had this idea you wanted to paint chairs but you don't you didn't know how you can find chairs we you didn't know how you're gonna you didn't want to buy chairs because you wanted to you know again it's with transformation to put something that was abandoned it was not in use anymore but turn it into something that's beautiful it's art and it's a part of your heart your creation and please share with us how the universe answers your request and send chairs your way and it's really it's a true miracle and I'm going to stop the screen right now but later I'm going to share with the chairs with the viewers yeah Thank you, thank you, Chell. So, you know, I, I, I'm giggling here a bit because in my life, <laughs> I've had friends say, you know, you're the queen of manifestation. If there is anyone that I have known, I mean, it feels like, you know, the information comes down to, in my dreams or sitting in my meditation or just really being intentional. And I'm very fortunate. I, I have really been... Um, Oh, I've just been so fortunate to to um, just have those experiences, you know, to, to trust. And my husband really trust trust me in those things. And so, a lot of things in my life have happened that way. And so, when I woke up from a dream, basically, it feel. I mean, I can remember during the night it happening, and thinking I got that message again. I needed to paint. I always cry when I say it, it just, that's when I know it's real for me, that there's no ego involved. It's just, this is your, this is your job. You're, this is your assignment. Okay. And so my assignment, if I may, um, was that I was to find chairs that were left out at the curb, which is very popular here in my area during seasons where you let go of your furniture and things and the trash pickup or recycling or whatever. And so I was to find chairs and The chairs were about to create a dream chair for women who had to leave everything. They didn't even have a chair to sit on. I don't know why it just hits me, like what it means to have a chair to sit on, to have a chair to sit at the table, to have a chair to dream on, a chair to do art on, a chair to do meditation, a chair to pray in, a chair to just sit and be. And so um, it just so happened within a few, oh, it seems like a few weeks after that, that my, you know, because we were in the middle of the pandemic or we were in the beginning of the pandemic, I should say, we were in the beginning of the pandemic when this happened. And so I believe that that came, you know, right at the front end of the pandemic. And so here, my husband and I in, in May then were walking through our neighborhood and the first chair, my dream chair appeared. And I, didn't know at that time that I was going to keep that chair, but it was like, okay. And it was a sign on it for free. And I turned it over and the chair was built in 1950 and it's the year I was born. And I was like, Oh, there's a magic in this. And so I brought it home. I left it there. And then, um, I, I don't know if I contacted you first or if I started asking people and then friends, started calling me about chairs that they were seeing in their neighborhood because it was that time of the year. And so um, the, I had I had 13 chairs before I knew it. That's what, you know, I might've had a little more, maybe one or two that I did not even use, but um, 
in the meantime, we were continuing, you know, we thought initially, I think that the, the COVID that our shelter in was going to be like, a, you know, oh, we have a day off school, we have a snow day, you know, and then, oh, we've got a blizzard. So we're in a week. Well, we've now soon learned that we're like trying to adjust to living in Iceland, I think. So, you know, there is, there is no going back. But anyway, the story that I share with that also is my own process where little extreme sadness in that same period of time, my husband was going through some real health issues and they, we needed to get him. They, they thought he possibly had cancer of his lungs. And so there was a lot that we were going through. And so the chairs kind of got put a little bit aside. And then all of a sudden on July 4th, Independence Day, I painted this first chair. I started it and I was blown away, not even making that connection that I needed to feel that freedom, you know, that sense of independence of what I want to send out there to these women. You're free, you're independent, you know, make a new dream that can happen. And so um, there you go. That was the first year. And then they just kept flowing and honestly, I can't even begin to tell you, I can't begin to tell you to have something to create like that during that particular time in our lives, particularly at that whole front end of the first six, nine months or whatever, that felt like it had meaning. And, you know, it just, it was so personally meaningful to me and powerful and that you said yes to offering this, I couldn't thank you enough. I was like, oh, here I am. I'm like, I'm like this little kid, Chow. I really am. I'm like this little kid that wants to bring in the piece of art and say, mommy, mommy, look what I made. And that's how I feel like I'm like, Chow, look what I'm thinking of. Look at what I made. So, and I thank you for being the yes, mommy. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Ellie, you know, your message resonated with me so much when you told me about you want to create chairs because when women leaving their abusive dissertation, they have nothing. And it resonated with me so much because when I left my situation, I had my daughter who was six months old at that time. And I have one bag of clothes for me and one bag of clothes for her. I have no furniture. I have nothing. I have no car. I just have th those two bags and her and her strollers because she was she was so tiny. I need to have something that she can put in. I can take her to places. So of course I was like, yes, this message to have a chair that's yours that you can eat your food on, you can write your journals on, you can meditate on, you can have conversation with family with loved ones on. Of you course, can hold I was your gonna... child on your lap. Yes. Ah. <laughs> oh. And look at what you created. I'm going to share the pictures now with our viewers. Well, and that the, the trash, be, you know, the trash to treasure story. Um, to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I want these women to know, you know, you might have been put out to the curb, but look at the beauty that can come. Yeah. Right. I'm going to read a little message that you sent, you have sent with me, uh, sent, share with me with this chair, the story you said, the first chair I found last spring is the one I'm keeping, the rainbow chair. On the bottom is stamps built in 1950, the year I was born. I found my story in the painting of it. We even saw the rainbow, which I had never seen in my polluted area. This chair is painted with the rainbow. It has the first line of somewhere over the rainbow written around it. It is a song that always brings tears to me. I click my heels and found home, as Dorothy said, home is best. This chair is home with me. I love this. It's the story of you creating this rainbow chair and also you are an inclusive person like you mentioned in the beginning. It's rainbow represent all of us. Yes. Nobody's excluded. No. Yeah. We're all different colors. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. And if I, and, you know, uh, it, just the idea of even the chakras in us, you know, there's a yes. rainbow within us that we can carry forward out into the world if we keep lighting it up and, and healing it. So it, there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, since 
I, I haven't told you this, child, but I actually, maybe I did, because I, I, I was pretty excited, is that, you know, I needed a new bike. I still love to ride my bike. And I had a 20-year-old bike that I just love, but I kind of, like, have gotten shorter and wider, and I couldn't get off and <laughs> on it as easily and and um and so we went out looking for a new bike and I bought a beautiful sweet turquoise bike and I called her Dorothy the minute I met her I said Dorothy you're coming home with me and then I bought purple shoes and now I click my heels and turn my wheels and off <laughs> so, yeah Oh, I love that. I remember you sending me a photos of your new bike. Yes. <laughs> There's more uh, photos of the, your rainbow chair and it has the writing Aww. in the back of the chairs. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the next chair. It's called Shine On. Aww. Yeah, this chair from the beginning, it was just a wooden chair. Right. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you turn it into... Better. A universe, that's what I feel. The yes, stars. Our, my granddaughters told me exactly when, when they saw it in blue, they told me what they wanted on it. My grandchildren, I, you know, my granddaughters wanted the sky and my grandson that wanted the orange, you know, at the sun up there. And so I just love it. And I had to get their approval on it. <laughs> I, <was> <laughs> I love yeah. this one. Yeah, I believe as well, like you, there's a, greater God, someone up there that yes. is always taking care of us, no matter what's happening. Yeah. So universe is always, I, I, I have pictures of a universe in my room. Me and my daughter, I shared with you, we created an art that it's universe with planets and stars. <laughs> yes. I, I love it. it. Yeah. Next year is called the oh. Red Throne. Yes. She's a special one to me. Yeah, another special one, because she really, there was nothing about this chair that stood out, and they just like, oh, you want red? <laughs> yeah. And then that my prayer shawl, you know, was on there with her, so, yeah. He Thank said you. the story of this chair, uh, her sitting on her red throne, yes. and all her dream come true is where this is going. Yes. I love yep. this, and you also painted a lotus yeah the lotus flower because you know that the lotus flower is such a beautiful presence of out of the muck we become this you know all the beauty comes so yeah we have to go through the muck first and the mud yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i love this chair with the asian theme on it yes i feel mm -hmm. that too yeah red represent power in chinese culture so mm -hmm. i really feel gold and red in the back in the days nobody could use it but the emperor so it's really the powerful symbol so i'm envisioning a woman sitting on this chair and just empowered and yes. not afraid so That's strong oh. yeah thank you oh. <laughs> this one <laughs> These are my helpers. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story of this chair. <laughs> oh, so here, my son-in-law texting me and saying, do you need more chairs? There's two down the street from us. And he took the little wagon and went down with my granddaughter and they put the chairs and sent me the picture. And those chairs, were, those seats were so dirty and you know, those chairs were so dirty, but once I cleaned them up, I was like, my goodness, they're the beauty of the chair in itself, the teak wood, the heaviness, the fine artistry in those chairs. Um, even the weave, the idea of weaving to me that we weave our lives in this whole sacredness of, you know, letting ourselves be witnessed. And so again, that's beautiful, that, 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 um those were not meant to be painted they were they held their own they truly held their own and there's something in that story you know and so and to have a matching set i wanted those two to go together i i just feel like they do have such a sacredness of just sitting and, and witnessing one another yeah my husband and i do a beautiful practice of checking in and 
And, you know, it's, it's just in, in this sacred conversation and sitting in chairs like that and turning and looking and just witnessing and listening to each other. And, um, you know, and so, and we're very, very mindful. In fact, the candles behind us, behind me are what we listen to or what we'd light each time and set our, you know, and, and do our conversation and our dialogue. And so it's that kind of a setting. Yeah. Wow. Uh, tell us a little bit about the shawl. You say it's your prayer shawl. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so I've been very blessed to have been given a number of um, prayer shawls. I think people have a sense of knowing that, you know, Allie likes her, her sacred spaces and my altar and, you know, I'm always creating altars and all around our home here. And so, um, these were given to, this was given to me. And um, so I used, I, I like to wear a shawl when I sit on the cushion and do my meditation time. And, and I've had this one for quite a while. And so there's a lot of really good prayer energy in that. It feels very sacred. So, and that's how it came to be, you know? It fit the chairs perfectly. Nothing could I find in fabric could, and I couldn't go out. I couldn't go out in the world you know, to stores or anything. And so to use what was in our home and have it manifest something more beautiful to me. Yes. When you shared this photo with me, and that was also the time I was going through a difficult time with my dad's health. And yes. you said, yeah, you said, I'm going to put you and your dad in these chairs and pray mm -hmm. for you and yes. your family. <sighs> with that candle, that heart candle. Yes. You are the kindest person, Ellie. I, yeah. I'm so happy that I met you all. <laughs> Hi, thank you. <laughs> this one, uh, Sit in Grace. I, I love it. It feels like spring. Grace. Yes. Yeah. The and flower. Think, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was from a church. There are several chairs that came from a church. And so that must have been, you know, I didn't have anything set up in my mind. The chairs always talk to me, my art, my canvas, whatever. It speaks to me like where it wants to go. And sometimes it's kind of like, are you kidding me? But <laughs> very, so um, there it is. Yeah. And, and I think that that's something, you know, that we all need to do is just sit in grace and, you know, really sit in it and be with that. So um, I love how the vines interconnected and it has a simplicity, but it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one was a gem <laughs> because it was a leather seat that was just, it, it was close to, well, I'm not even, you know, again, it was from a church group, but it was like, oh, are you, you're so tattered and torn. Can I redo you? And, you know, I was out there doing that when my husband took, came out and took the picture. He was just like awestruck. Look what you did to that chair. So the seat on it. So um, because it was tempting to be one of those chairs that you would cut out the center and put a pot in and sit it in a garden. I don't know if you've seen, but that's not what I was creating. I wanted something that had a practicality, but also became a piece of art that, you know, someone would never let go of that they would just have it as one unique piece in their home so there she is feel your joy she definitely <laughs> i love it yeah. you have a thing for polka dots i have a big thing for polka dots <laughs> i mean you you, you caught me busted <laughs> <laughs> oh this one was so broken my husband was such a Oh, so good about um, really taking time with repairing this one. And again, it was like, is it because there were so many little broken pieces. And then um, so we did a lot of wood gluing and fixing it. And it's just like, well, she tells a beautiful story, cracked, not broken. You can see all the cracks in it still. So I painted gold in, in those cracks. Um, and I think I shared with you, Chow, that she just reminds me of the story of Wabi Sabi. You know, in Japanese art, they t paint gold in the cracks of the broken pieces of pottery. And it's this whole story that we all have those brokenness and we are all perfectly imperfect. So, yeah, Wabi Sabi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, my happy place. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we all need one. That's my feeling. And when I was painting that chair, a friend of mine is, was going, 
significantly going through a major depression. And I know that she loves polka dots. And so she was who came to mind for me with that piece. I, you know, um, and, and that's a scarf that I, that was mine, the green and white polka dot that I actually, um, it always made me feel a little bit happier. So there, that just came together. See, they're the same years. There's three of these that, um, that came from, from someone's house that have the same center, but they all be, and I love the center of them. Those yes. back. Yeah. This one is so colorful. I just <laughs> smile when I see it. Oh, yes. <laughs> happy. Yes. It screams happy. Yeah. <laughs> this is oh. another chair that had the same back that you were talking about. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those three of them. And, and, um, Wow, that one, you know, again, it was another scarf of mine. And it's just perfect how they worked out. Like I said, you know, that can't get out and get any kind of fabric. And so, um, and I love, you know, making use of things that I've had. That's what I, that, that little child in me that turned the box upside down and, you know, found an old shirt to cut out for curtains for it. So, um, yeah, isn't, and it's such softness to that. And um, it's nice to have a soft place to land. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last chair. It's called Be Your Lovely Self. And yeah. the message that you share with me, you say, today I paint the last of the dozen chairs to donate to save for the auction. They have been my COVID creation, my hope holders, that will sit in circle and share and break bread at the table once again. Feeling joy brought back my power. In my dream life, I receive instruction to receive, be your lovely self on the final chair. It is all that is ever asked of us. How divine that is the last chair that came from the church in San Jose. It's a sacred chairs. Yeah, I love this. We just all need to be lovely and be kind and the world is truly will be a better place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know we don't have a, um, there, you know, I think you have a dozen chair and a child's stool. I ended up giving you a child when I, yes. Yeah. So there were a total of 13 chairs, you have 12 and a child's stool. Mm -hmm. And so they, they um, yeah, I, I, I really, I hope that our conversation has been supportive and, you know, encourages people to understand the value, the true value of what these chairs are. And I, I, I can only imagine the stories that could go with these chairs of women who are coming out of these domestic violence situations. And, you know, like it brought up for you, Chell, what their story would be with the dream chair. Yeah. My dream chair will be the sit in the red thorn chair. I there have nothing, <laughs> but now I feel I feel strong now because I know that I can give back and support the victims and the survivor who's yeah. who went through or is going through these horrible times. But one day they all know they can sit in their throne. They can be powerful. They can take ownership of their life and be independent, take care of the children's be on their own and everything will be okay so that that's my it chair starts out with a chair and then it becomes a, a room of your own and then it becomes a home of your own i mean it just keeps manifesting into you know greater things so um you know thank you i mean it it, it gee to see them again it, it thank you chow gosh I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's all about the essence of something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. all yes. about the essence. Yeah. And I think that's what I hope that people feel in my art is the essence because it's my own essence, you know, that I'm of, of being a hope holder and a light holder that I want to come through. Ah. <sighs> Well, thank you for sharing your heart with us today. Uh, it is truly a part of your heart. And thank you for being so vulnerable about the story that you share and your creation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, always, with every, you know, I just miss being able to physically be there and save every, every time there. It's just such a, 
oh yes we're all missing <laughs> we are not alone are we <laughs> yeah no, no we're not <laughs> no. so and I have I already you know I have a few more button trees to bring so last year I did the button tree on my own because we weren't together so I added all the buttons and so <laughs> I have a new one for this year coming so <laughs> yeah for this year in October we're going to have a um, collective art project it's Ellie's tree and we're gonna do it in the Fremont Street East the painting is gonna be there whoever comes say a prayer put an intention on the button trees yes. and that will be the button tree for our next year's gala yes. yeah all right well, we do look forward to seeing you again in our gala uh, September 18th. You'll be speaking for us. And thank you so much for thank your you. time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for all the viewers out there, if you haven't purchased your tickets, it's only $25. You get to come and bid on Ali's chair and also other exciting auction items that we have. Uh, you can purchase a ticket on our website, RSVP today. And we look forward to seeing you, Ellie, and also with all the viewers out there. Mm -hmm.